As for the members, they're wonderful and I love them. Chileans are so funny and so spunky and energetic and they're so loving. They can be very passionate as well, so sometimes they'll be easily offended. Most of the inactives that you'll meet are inactive because they were offended by someone at church and they just never got over it. That's very common. Um, but for the same reason, they're very quick to love, they're very feeling, and they're very serving. They're not as good at accepting service, but they're very good at serving other people. So they'll always want to feed you, they'll always want to see if you're doing all right, do you need me to fix your skirt for you, you're so skinny, are you sure you're eating well enough, and all sorts of things like that, and they're wonderful. Um, I think the members, I remember an experience in my last area where we were very popular with the members. Everyone loves you when you're the missionary. And I remember we needed to pick something up from one of the members' houses. And we had a rule in our mission that the sisters can't be alone with any man, even if he's a member. So we knocked on the door and then the brother answered the door and he said, hey, I heard you're coming by to pick this up. Come on in. And we asked, is your wife home? And he said, she's not right now, but she will be soon. And it was raining outside. So he felt really bad having us outside. He said, just come in for a second. You'll be fine. And we said, we looked at each other and no, we're fine. We'll just wait. If you could just grab the book or whatever it was that we were picking up, we'll just wait for you. And and it's, it's no big deal. Um, and he came back out and he handed us the thing that we needed. And he looked at us and he said, I know you have that rule where you can't be alone with us. Good job. And I was so affected by that. Because lots of times the members won't know all of the rules that the missionaries have or they won't understand. They won't know that you have to be home at a certain time. They won't understand that you can't eat seafood, different things like that. Most of the time they will, but sometimes they won't. And just because they love you, they'll want to be with you, they'll want to help you, they'll want to do things that maybe they're not supposed to do for you. Um, and it's tempting sometimes to choose love and popularity with the members over obedience. But that experience was so powerful for me because it was one of those times where I knew the members loved us. And because he loved us, he offered us his home so that we wouldn't get soaking wet. But when we were obedient and stuck to that, he respected us, not just liked us. And that makes a big difference for the miracles that you can do in an area. The members will always love you but they won't always respect you as a missionary. And so if you really want to do well in your area, if you really want to work miracles, you need to be the missionary that everyone knows is doing what they should do, that everyone knows is doing what God wants them to do, and that everyone knows will be the one that can teach their friend the gospel. As for transportation, you will either walk or ride the bus unless you become an assistant to the president, and then you'll have a car. But if you're a sister, that's not going to happen. Um, I remember being really confused about the buses when I first got there, and it took me months to figure it out. But um, whenever you need to go somewhere that's not within walking distance, you find a bus who's the right kind of bus, so it's the right company and brand of bus, and it has to be the right route which I didn't understand for a long time, and I did get lost a couple of times because of that. But they'll have a little sign at the, at the front of the bus that'll say 10D or something like that. And it will list a couple little cities and little stops that it will go to. And so you get to ride around the rickety bus everywhere, which I love. The buses are really fun, and they're fun places to talk to people. Um, other than that, you'll walk, which is better or worse depending on how hilly your area is. So I recommend low-soled shoes. I know we're not talking about fashion, but I rolled my ankle one time because I was wearing those really high, fat sister missionary shoes and really low ones I always found to be better for me. Um, but walking is fun. I thought walking was great. Kept us in good shape. Otherwise, um, <clears throat> sometimes members will drive you places. Not everyone has a car. As for just general living, um, the houses are not always the nicest, but 
they're what you need. So you'll go there to sleep study, um, eat food at night because you'll be really hungry at night. There's not a dinner time. So you'll eat breakfast in your house. You'll eat a big lunch. And in my mission, at least, we didn't eat dinner. The Chileans don't eat dinner. They eat something called once, which is more like a evening snack. So that's bread. That's a little ham and cheese sandwich that's toasted or hot chocolate and fruit. Something small in the evening, but you don't really stop to eat that. So you'll eat lunch and then you'll go all day walking around, talking to people, and then you'll come back home, you'll plan, and then you can eat a dinner or a snack at 10.30 or something at night. Okay, if I were to talk to me right after I had received my mission call, I would tell me not to stress out so much because it is going to be okay. <laughs> I remember watching the district and just sitting there crying, thinking, I can't do that. I can't teach like that. This is, ah, ah, ah. And I was so excited, but so afraid of the unknown and so afraid that I was not going to do it right. And that carried on into my mission for a little bit. But really, you just got to be yourself and do the best you can and it will be fine. That's what I would say to me.